I think what's really important and the conversations that Georgie and I were having since she was 14 was that at the end of the day, everything that we film, she had control over. She would get the last say in the edit. She could decide what went in the film, what went out of the film, whether we even made a film. And so that created a really beautiful safety net to be able to film and explore and um, go on a creative journey together. So the dream life of Georgie Stone spans 19 years from when Georgie was born until she's 19. And it's really about her pushing up against all of the barriers that society put on her as a transgender teenager and follows her as she grows up and fights legal battles, affirms her gender and emerges into adulthood. I, I wanted them to understand that I'm a girl. I'm a girl. Not, maybe not in the outside, but in the inside. I feel like a girl. I approached Georgie a long time ago, just after I made Gaby Baby. And I think it, originally it was because I was really interested in the perspectives of young people who are talked a lot about, but are never given the opportunity to speak for themselves. And I learned making Gaby Baby that when young people, in this case, children growing up with LGBTIQ parents are given the opportunity to tell their stories, they speak truth to power. So I reached out to Georgie and her mum. She was 14 at the time. It's probably a film that's taken the longest to make, especially being a short film, but I've been filming with Georgie over the last sort of seven years or so. I think as Georgie matured, she realised that she did want to tell a story that had her in the kind of creative chair. She'd had so many people telling stories about her and just watching that media landscape of uh, transgender people having their stories, everyone talking about them, that she decided she wanted to do something with this you know, beautiful footage that we'd shot over many years. So even though we have achieved a lot, we still need to make sure that we are protecting and looking after trans kids in Australia. It's the same on all my films, actually. Um, if the actual practical filming of it is kind of a bit of a one woman show. I think what I've found is that it's that beautiful building of relationship and trust, which is the space that I really enjoy as a documentary filmmaker, but you can't hold all of the pressure of making a film. So I've found these incredible people that sit around me and hold that responsibility, um, the ethics, the funding, the creative direction even, and Closer Productions has held that space for me now on In My Blood It Runs and this film. Um, so you have the amazing mind of Sophie Hyde, um, Matt Bate, and then Lisa Sherrard. So yeah, there's all these amazing people that sit around the film, but while I'm there, it's just me and a camera and a lot of time. <laughs> It is so hard to make a short film. I'm gonna go back to features. It was just as much energy making this short film over so many years. I think what was a huge challenge with this was that I'd filmed over so many years and we had so many random parts of Georgie's life. But I do believe, you know, that kind of that dogma idea that we have, it's restriction that breeds creativity. And in the end, you know, having all of our producers in you know, a writing room around how to tell this story creatively led to the beautiful form, uh, non-linear kind of you know, study and memory form of the film, which in now is my favourite part of it. Yeah, that was an incredibly challenging puzzle that was beautifully articulated by our editor, Brian Mason. I think that you know, after lots of conversations with Georgie herself, the big takeaway is the importance of the agency of any human in, in their lives. And, you know, for Georgie, she had to fight for agency over her body, over her story, over her life. And I think you can see in the film the importance of that. You know, it, it's kind of a really simple message to trans people everywhere is that, you know, you are loved and you will be OK, you know. <laughs> Um, and that's in part why Georgie called this film The Dream Life of Georgie Stone is because she grew up with so many horrible representations of trans people that end in disaster 
And this is her love letter to young people everywhere to say, you know, your dream life is possible. This is what happened to me. Um, and just to see how valuable, important having a supportive family is and access to gender affirming healthcare for trans people.